Hello, welcome to Quok Talk. I'm Crystal here on Think Tech. Tuesday, kind of dreary morning, kind of rainy, kind of a day where people like to stay at home and watch TV. Maybe you're turning on some porn. Or maybe better yet, come and join us for a conversation about porn. How about that for a Tuesday morning topic? So a month ago, we had this topic. This is part two. So if you, in case you missed it, you have to go back on the video spreadsheet on the Think Tech website and check it out. I had a very interesting conversation with our guest. And uh, you know, porn, the reason we broke it up into two parts, porn and pain, is because there's just so much about porn, so much baggage, so much background information that we had to cover um, last time. And if, again, I encourage you to go and try to find the uh, reference and, and file and, and watch it because it is very, very uh, insightful. So we didn't really get to the pain part so much because there's so much nitty gritty, interesting industry information about the porn world. Now, we've got our wonderful guest again to continue our conversations about porn and pain and the concept of the more you watch, the less you feel. Hmm, right? Okay, so we're going to dissect this pain concept with my beautiful guest. Professor Ayu Saraswati, again from uh, Women's Studies at UH. Welcome again. Thank you again for having me. Thank you. All right, so um, we're not going to recap everything we did Absolutely. last time. Unless you have some like a nutshell that you wanted to carry forward that remind people of. Yeah, so one of the things that I would hope that we get to talk about today that yeah. we didn't talk about last time is the ways in which pain is actually the thread that connects the porn world together. And this is a, okay. an argument that Pro Professor Robert Jensen argues. And this is one of the things that I sort of um, talk about in my book as well in terms of, you know, what does that mean that pain right. is the threat that connects the porn world together. What was this mm -hmm. book that you referred to again? Uh, it's by Robert Johnson and oh. Gail Dines. And so okay. um, the ways that, I mean, when we look at the world of pain, mm -hmm. uh, the world of porn through the lens of pain, well, first of all, when we think about sex and sexuality, mm -hmm. do you often think about it in terms of pain or mm -hmm. in terms of pleasure? Pleasure. Pleasure, yeah. right? And so we know that our brain works in terms of using pain and pleasure as our compass, right? And so we often um, think of pleasure when we want to um, do something fun and we want to do something more of that. When we, when we experience something that is pleasurable, pleasurable, then we want to do more of that. Right. And we, when we experience something that is painful, we tend to avoid that, right? And so in my own book, um, I'm thinking about well, what, how can we think about sex and sexuality, sexuality differently if we looked at it from the perspective of pain rather than pleasure, right? Because again, sex is often talked about in that sort of a pleasurable activity. Right. But, but what, kinds of, um, under, what kinds of different understanding can we get at, right, when we look at sexuality uh, from the perspective of pain? So mm -hmm. that's what my okay. book is really about. Um, and so, and obviously in one of the chapters, I talk about porn, mm. right? And, and again, rather than looking at, you know, different ways in which, you know, porn has been represented or like you know, women has been represented, I look at the, the narrative of pain in porn, and particularly in terms of Asian women in porn. And so mm. that's what we talked about right. the last Correct. time, Asian women and the ways in which uh, when we click the category of Asian women um, in porn, that they are often represented as you know, experiencing that pain. Right, which is a pleasurable pain. It's almost like they yes. wanted it, and that's why the men proceed. Yes. Or... Um, in, in these sort of like narratives, in these videos, the, the women themselves are not really experiencing or like represented to be experiencing pleasurable as such um, mm -hmm. as they are really experiencing pain. And the pleasure comes from the people um, watching such a sort of painful activity. Do, for this is mostly mm -hmm. a male audience, right? Yes, We're heterosexual about. male, okay. mm -hmm. mostly. Okay. Is there a history of pain associated with porn or just pain associated with sexuality? Is this something mm -hmm. that's been in our innate human mm -hmm. nature mm -hmm. ever since? Or do you think it gets worse and worse or more distorted because of what we're exposed to? And yeah. yeah, so pain in some ways, it, it's one of, again, one of the narratives, and we talked about this uh, last time as well, is that it, it's only one story. Right, but isn't that interesting that this is this story that is attached to Asian women? So if you actually watch porn, yeah. uh, which I kind of have to do, and you click on like this different labels, different categories, they have the MILF category, they have all of these different categories, right. uh, then the the narrative is not always about pain, right? right, right. But what's interesting, what uh, this professor um, talked about when when he talks about um, pain uh, as, as this, this, this thread that connects the porn world together is that when you think about it, porn is 
um, it's a performance, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we have porn stars are workers. Right? And right. so the assumption here is that, that there is pain even as these porn stars are doing their work, right? To, be, to have to perform sex and sexual intercourse mm -hmm. with, you know, another um, actors in some ways, right? That there is pain in there. And the people who watch it in some ways are assumed to come from that space of pain, right? When they watch it, there's this something <clears throat> unsettling about their own sexuality, about mm. women's sexuality, about men's sexuality. And I don't necessarily agree with that assumption mm -hmm. because there is an interview um, with um, different uh, women porn stars um, who talk about their experiences as right. workers. Right. And, you know, some directors would even say that they would choose performers who exhibit sort of positive energy, right. that they're pleasant to work with. And so so this this idea that that or like the setting of porn films as, as this sort of site of pain, I don't necessarily agree with that. Yeah. But what I, what I am sort of intrigued by is this idea, you know, when we trace the story of pain, right, in porn or in our life, um, or in, in terms of sexuality, um, what understanding do we get, you know, from that, right? Because Can we again, break down this pain into yes. different levels or different interpretations of pain? Absolutely. I mean, there are, again, scholars who differentiate between emotional pain, right. physical pain, right, bodily pain. Um, but again, that is very Western, Westernized in some ways, right, okay. because uh, it, without the duality of the, the split of the body and the mind, then what is painful in the body is painful in the mind. Exactly. I mean, I've never experienced, you know, like my tooth aching and, and like, like, oh, <laughs> it's just physical. You know, I have, you know, um, which is kind of interesting, right, to think about it that way. Yeah. Um, but, but what I love is uh, there's a feminist, um, her name is Gloria um, Anzaldua, mm -hmm. and, um, and her take on pain, which I love, and she said that pain is the way of life. Right, pain is the way of life. Right. But what I love about this is that um, pain is neither good nor bad. Right. It's it's just is. It's the way of life. If you are alive, then pain you is experience just experience pain. It's just part childbirth of, is painful. Exactly. No pain, no gain. There are so many aspects yeah, of pain yeah. that you and, can and and and, and so with. obviously sexuality. You know, as we experience life, we experience sex, we experience sexuality, we experience pain. It's right. just part of that. It's an integral part of that but mm -hmm. okay so taking that part yes. of that does porn distort that concept of pain yes so okay. so pain, so porn takes so so when we see porn and particularly the kind of porn that i analyze uh, again it's attached to women asian women right mm -hmm. and so the men themselves we don't really see them as having pain they're not in pain no we so in, in some of the some of the videos that, um that i that i uh, watch yeah. um we don't sometimes we don't see the the male's face uh -huh. right because obviously the, the 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 angle of the camera um is is uh positioned so that it? yeah we the, the, the audience or the viewer uh -huh. um, embodies the, right. the, the male gaze, right, exactly. or the male bodies. Um, so we don't really see that. Um, but and nobody wants to see kind of a guy huffing and gruffing anyway. Some, I maybe don't know. some people do. Exactly, okay. right. But why do we assume that? <laughs> right, right? Okay, right. Okay. <laughs> because, because I think, um, I, you know, it, it is such a beautiful thing. And I think to be able to integrate every single aspect of it, the pain, the pleasure, and everything in between, um, and, and to really see even right. men and women and all different kind of genders to, to really experience, you know, sex as, yeah. as this beautiful and delicious thing, right? But what we see in porn is just this, particularly, again, the one that I, that I looked at, um, that the women are in pain and, 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 and pain as, as a bad thing in, in that way, right? And that it's not it, meant to disturb you. This yes pain in porn, yes, right? The yes. Creators of these mm -hmm. videos are are believing there's a genuine market and mm -hmm. and an, an attraction to mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. form. You know, I don't know that th this concept of genuine or, or real sort of like desire, right? Because obviously there's no such thing as desire as, as being free from um, our social environment, right? Um, there's desire map and in some ways we'd like to think that how we feel is natural. But in my first book, um, actually, I talked about feelings, right? And the ways in which that feelings is yeah. the ways in which power works, right? 
And so if you want to understand how power works mm -hmm. in our society, we look at how we are made to feel a certain way. And so some of the examples, I didn't really talk about this in my so book. So it's kind of power and pain, that whole duality. Yes, that's yes, so, so, so in some ways, so, so an example that is easy to understand um, in terms of understanding how power is gendered and all that yeah. is um, I often ask my students if, if there is a heterosexual sort of couple, a mother and a father, and then the baby starts crying yeah. in public space, right. who do you think would uh -huh. feel more guilty right. to pick up the baby and soothe the baby? Mm. Right, and so usually my students would say the mothers, right. right? But so so again, this shows that even as we feel yeah. that this this feeling is natural to us, yeah. that in some ways that this, this feeling sort of reflects how power works in our society. That that women are taught to feel more guilty to take care of their kids mm. than men, right? So and associating that with the porn, though, mm -hmm, do you mm -hmm. think that women place themselves in a different situation? Uh, or, or accept their role Absolutely. in porn because Absolutely. of society. And Absolutely. Both, both the, the women in porn themselves, because mm -hmm. again, these women are workers, right? right? They're right. actors, right? right? And so they have to work, they have to perform a certain way, which is, you know, embodying that feeling of pain, um, and also as well as the audience, right? Could it be male, could it be female? Mm -hmm. they, they are made to feel a certain way when they watch these things, right? Um, and so mm -hmm. when I, when I, study this, yeah. I clearly remembered how certain days I couldn't just wake up. Like I felt very depressed uh -huh. after watching this, right? Uh, watching porn. Watching porn. Because okay. yeah. when you study this, you don't just watch. No, and it's, you, it's right? not light. You actually replay the same film over and over. Do you and watch over. it with your students and discuss? Oh no, 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 no! Oh, I don't. I don't do all. that. I don't no? do that. No. Um, and so, you know, after watching it days and days, and, and I became sort of, I, I felt depressed. Right, because in Why? some ways, um, because rather than embodying the gaze of the the male audience, right? I felt that I'm that Asian woman okay. in in the film, and I felt violated. Oh. And there are also this notion of you know digital rape, right? right? In some ways, that you feel that you're being raped. That that every time I enter this the space of the cyberspace, yeah. I felt like it's not a safe yeah. space for me to be. You know, I, I, I don't know if I went to the extent of depressed because mm -hmm. I don't see it as yes. much as you. I just kind of yes. did my research and just, yes. I don't even want to open the clips yes. because I don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. And I also... Why is that? Why do you feel that way, right? Right, it's disturbing. Mm -hmm. And also, mm -hmm. I, what I was thinking with the violent issue mm -hmm. that you're talking about is what triggers the violence in men against women out mm -hmm. in the real world. That's Absolutely. what really bothered me. Absolutely. When people, Absolutely. when men distort the concept of yes. sexuality. Yes. There is actually a study that shows that men who watch porn yeah. um, are more forgiving in terms of huh? the violence that are happening around them. Oh. Right? It doesn't mean that they are more likely to rape. Right, uh, but it is. But but the studies show that they are more um, sort of desensitized in some ways, right? And so when they see sort of like violence mm. around them, they tend to um, not uh, respond with sort of like you know, well, let's stop this. Or, how do you think cultural backgrounds affect how men perceive? You know, even if porn is mm -hmm. the same all over, mm -hmm. because of their upbringing and how they treat women or their positions. Do you think that that is something? Oh, absolutely, huge? absolutely, right? Cultural background, um, sort of family background, but but unfortunately, we live in a culture that is patriarchy, even in the U.S. Right, right? we said that last time. Yeah, still, and so yeah. and so when when we still live in that culture, and and they call it a rape culture, right? A rape culture, you know, when we see all of these things that are happening, and then we see certain people who are not being quote unquote, you know. Um, punished in a certain way yeah. when they rape, right? Or, or, or people of certain genders and race or don't get punished. Or they blame the woman for yes. asking for it. Yes, the victim blaming, or like a judge would ask, you know, did you see did that you article? not need, you know, your did you put this, did, oh did my you God, put let's your talk knees about together, that. right? Where was and that? So, was it, okay, I don't remember but where. But there was yeah. a judge mm -hmm. in whichever yes, state yes, yes, recently. Yes, yes, yes. Do you want to talk yes. about it? Yes, so I, I think he um, asked the, 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 
right, victim, right. The, the survivor, um, you know, why didn't you, you know, put your knees together, right, so that you can prevent um, rape. And so that was interesting um, because in some ways, again, this is uh, the rape culture, right? It's the sort of victim blaming that you can do something um, about it rather than um, looking at the structure, rather than looking at the institution, you, again, blame the women. Right. Mm -hmm. So going back to the porn image mm -hmm. of porn and pain and mm -hmm. taking that stupid yeah. judge's um, concept of closing your knees is you get the yeah. uh, other extreme. So yeah. in the porn videos, you've got these women, maybe it's a little BDSM yes. association, mm -hmm. but they tie the women up and stretch them out till you can't even mm -hmm. get any more exposed. Mm -hmm. The other extreme. And so what does that do? to your concept of sexuality really is just yeah. it's more than in your face yeah yeah i mean i think when we we bring up like issues of like bdsm i think it's very very important that we really dissociate bdsm with pain and the kind of pain that i talk about uh because i um I, you know, I, I did go to, you know, BDSM workshops as part of my research. I did go to, you know, and, and become part of the community uh, of BDSM and, and uh, really spend time with them. And, and when pain is, um, you know, part of your sexual activity and when it is done in such a quote-unquote professional ways, I don't know how else to say it, <laughs> but in a respectful way. Um, okay, so it is the consents, the, all those it things. It is the consent, the rules. and it is actually hard because I had to learn how to, you know, do flogging, <laughs> yeah, to do all, what do you, you know, you spanking. you had to learn how to do um, it? It was part of my you research. You don't know how to whip, I <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I don't know to do it in, in the right way, in, in the way that is both respectful and the way that right. actually aroused pleasure in mm. the other person. And it's actually hard, and I still can't. I do it's that. It's a fine line. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing when we can do that. And so, so I just need to sort of, you know, put it out there that well, it is not... Let's hold mm -hmm. that thought. We'll take Absolutely. a quick break. I think this porn and pain, we're onto mm -hmm. something. And, and that fine thread that you're yes. talking about that links it or crosses over and turns you into the dark side. I don't know. We're mm -hmm. going to continue to uh, deconstruct this uh, painful pornographic topic. So don't go away. We'll be back very soon. Aloha everyone, I hope you've been watching Think Tech Hawaii, but I'm here to invite you to watch me on Viva Hawaii every Monday at 3 p.m. I'm waiting for you. Mahalo. Aloha, I'm Kaylee Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. If you want to be an informed citizen, we invite you to watch every week as we bring wonderful guests together on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network every Monday at 2 o'clock p.m. We talk with people who know what they're talking about when it comes to the economy or the government or to building a better society. So we'll see you then on Ehana Kako, which means let's work together every Monday at 2 o'clock p.m. on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network. Aloha. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you too. Join us on Center Stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. Hi, I'm Stacy Hayashi with the Think Tech Hawaii show, Stacy to the Rescue, highlighting some of Hawaii's issues. You can catch it at Think Tech Hawaii on Mondays at 11 a.m. Aloha, see you then. Welcome back to Quok Talk, talking about porn and pain with Professor Ayu. Now, we were just getting into this heated discussion about whew, what pain is and what it really kind of opens up into. Um, Ayu, we have a wonderful lady in the panel that I always like to bring in to kind of stir things up. And yeah. Zuri, you never see her, but she's always there. She's the one she's controlling the panel. So Zuri, welcome into our conversation again today. Hello. Hi, Zuri. You know what? Have you ever watched porn? Don't, I mean. Uh, I think I'll have to admit it on air, but yes. Of course, hello. right? Who hasn't, right? Okay, so my question is, well, this is like an open mm -hmm. woman's girls discussion. After just dabbling in some, you know, no offense, I'm not trying to be not PC to any ethnic background, but why are black dicks so 
huge. <laughs> uh, can you please, like, forget your professor thing. Zuri, let's talk girl talk. I mean, what's your uh, take on it? <laughs> you know, that's actually a very interesting comment. And, you know, I, it seems to be that a lot of men, black men have, you know, what they'd call a men dingo. They're more large and everything like that. But it seems to be a cross-cultural thing. So that, that is something different. What I'm interested in is, um, what do you think about the different categories of women is in concerns, uh, in terms of race, race and ethnicity? How race do you think they're ethnicity. portrayed differently? How they're portrayed differently in the world of porn? Right, like we've been talking about Asian women and everything like that, but have you been noticing or have you ever noticed how they portray black women? You know, I don't even see that many black women. That's so interesting. Do you want to ask Dr. What do first? you think? Why are there different portrayals of, yeah? Oh, yeah, because um, racism and sexism, obviously, as they intersect, is live and, you know, alive and well in the porn industry. And huh. this is another part of it. Um, and why it's so important is that um, rather than challenging these sort of, you know, racist sort of ideologies, that porn industry really runs with it, right? right? And this is why, as you talked about earlier, that the representations of black men is always hypersexualized, mm. as well as, you know, black women is, is always sort of like hypersexualized in, in a certain way. And um, Asian men, right, in particular, <laughs> right, is, is being um, emasculated. And even in some of the comments, because uh, the study that I do, I don't only look at the videos, but I also look at the comments that these people would make about particular um, uh, videos. Uh, and in, in some of these videos, people would say, why are these women screaming? You know, because like the... Um, the men who is, you know, penetrating them only have like small penis, <laughs> right? Um, and because it's you know Asian men, right, I was say. and so again, there's this sort of uh, stereotypes see. that is but always. But there's some being, truth to it, though, no? Well, is uh, right? It's, it's what 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 people would say about media. Media is uh, always either exaggerates, right? It's uh, sure. some people would say, um, you know, what what do you call that that mirror? Oh, the carnival mirror. Oh, or the, right, when it the, distorts. That the, the distorts. funny funny house. Yes, or? yes, yeah. yes. And so so media is al is always like that. There's there's always certain parts of, of truth, but what does that mean right. anyway? When you are already really distorted. Sure. Um, Asian men come in all different sizes and shapes, just like black men, just like white men, just like women. Just so like, did you hate it yes, when they? Made that comment about black men? <laughs> I kind of, yeah. I, no, I, I kind of hear it. it. I want to hear yeah, it. Yeah, because I think that's part of the problem, right? right. I, um, because, you know, because that is not obviously true but but that is really the the stereotype right. and that's and how, how racism, it. you know, per it perpetuates it. Perpetuates it. Exactly. Yeah, so. Wow. Well, you know what, Zuri, I think you picked out a huge issue here that I don't think we can even continue to do in just a short time. Do you have any reflections on it yourself? Because your ethnic background is um, part Indian and part African, is that right? Yes. Well, I am black and I am Native American, Ojibwe to be specific. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I was just kind of reacting to that because I thought it was very interesting that black men are portrayed to have, you know, these big dicks, they're so <laughs> powerful, every race wants them. But then when like a black woman is portrayed, it's like, you know, this ghetto black slut, things like that, like, so she's demeaned. Yeah. And so I was kind of going to ask the doctor what she thinks about women who kind of go away from realistic porn because the, you know, the selection is so limited and so demeaning for my own race. Does that make wow. sense? So, yeah, she's asking about how you feel. I mean, what, where does it, like, you know, she said there's such a uh, lack of representation mm -hmm. and equal depiction of um, black American mm -hmm. women or Asian mm -hmm. or Af yeah, ethnic backgrounds mm -hmm. similar to, and where do people go and how does that affect them? Yeah, um, so what is interesting um, that there is a study by, I believe, um, Professor Miller, um, Mireille Miller Young, I believe, uh, and she looks at specifically uh, black women as um, porn stars and how they themselves have websites. Uh -huh. um, so rather than going to these websites that I study, like youporn.com or right. all these other websites, um, that they themselves, because of this uh, internet, this is also um, what internet does to porn industry, is that it allows 
us if we want to like open our own website yeah. and be our own porn star so that we can get the money ourselves and so what is there you open up your own porn site so, so what is interesting <laughs> that she <laughs> was talking about that that allows um, sort of black women to have their own websites and 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 gain the financial freedom mm. um, by being porn stars because of this this internet industry so that's really interesting and and I what I also want to highlight is that you know internet is such an awesome place uh, that there are artists um, who created website like what it's called milk M I L K mm. and on that website it's it's not only just porn um, but also she would have this sort of um, uh, t counter uh, ticker where you will read um, that are like how many people have died of HIV by the time you watch this porn you know oh, right. so okay, so in so. some ways that you're being being more critical um, about porn and when you watch porn it's not only within that context of your own sexuality but also the larger uh, part of that although um, that in itself I think is problematic because the narrative that we often hear in sex ed or, or, or anywhere mm. is that don't have sex because then you'll have it, STDs and, 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 and stigmatize issue. people right. with STDs because you know we have people who have cancer we have people who have diabetes right. we have people right. who have like Acceptance. it's just disease again pain just you know like illness is just part of life but you stigmatize people people with STDs Agreed. and so that's also not How a do problem. you think people can educate themselves to be more critical mm -hmm. uh, when they do, ev if they go and engage in mm -hmm. watching porn, it's fine. Everybody has their own freedom and choice. Mm -hmm. But how do you educate people to distinguish mm -hmm. which way things lie? And if you're uncomfortable with it, what do you do? How can you be proactive mm -hmm. in doing something else to compensate? And like mm -hmm. Zuri was um, mm -hmm. her, her concept. Yeah, there are websites, which I don't remember. I just read about this. Um, but there are websites um, made by women for women and uh, for porn, right? Mm -hmm. And what they highlight is that they want to look at the quote unquote real sex. They want to quote, uh, they want to um, uh, look at real bodies. So not just very particular, very, um, again, people have the options to have breast augmentation if they want to, but you know, certain porn sort of videos often highlight women who have particular kind of body shape. Uh -huh. um, and, and on this website, um, women would have, you know, people with different kinds of you know breasts different kinds of bodies uh, so it's real bodies real sex I like and, that, and real What's this orgasm website called? I don't remember that's oh. the I just read it last night oh um, okay but it's made by women for women like and that. so it's it, it's and empowering so there are websites like that and again yeah. thanks to the internet because before if you think about it, the production the distribution of porn videos would be very very expensive right now with the internet everything is you know relatively you know cheaper and it's affordable. ironic I mean I have to go back to the first time we talked about porn last month mm -hmm. is that you mentioned that the whole um, porn industry you know we used to say oh it's the internet that's uh, encouraged mm -hmm. this whole boom mm -hmm. but in fact you said it was the other way around how yes, it created yes. the whole yes. security system yes 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 because porn really you know forces the internet to you know get it together you know if you want to continue to arouse us right the the, the uh, security system right. the payment system <laughs> and even the yeah. fast it's speed the that you know we can of it yeah absolutely right yeah so well we We've opened up, um, you know, a can of worms, if you wish. I mean, a lot of people are uncomfortable talking about these types of issues. Um, but you know what? It's out there. So whether it's in your face or whether you want to do it on the side and not tell anyone and lie, lie to yourselves every day and deny the fact that you are um, doing something that you think is not healthy, you know, please educate yourselves, think about it, be critical, and, and know what's out there. And like Ayu says, you have your choices. You can be proactive in creating, not necessarily sites, but just creating just uh, your own position on something. Um, Ayu, just in our short time left, mm -hmm. do you have anything else we can leave the audience? And Zuri, thanks again for that mm -hmm. wonderful um, mm -hmm. joint discussion. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. So check out, you know, certain blogs, certain websites like feministing.com, right? Miss Magazine blogs, where you can then learn more about um, issues of women Women that are empowering for us and then do Google a uh, search of you know things that could be pleasurable pleasurable and empowering for us excellent Thank all right we'll take that with you enjoy your Tuesday after morning yeah okay mm -hmm. alrighty and again thank you for tuning on think tech and we'll see you next week